Kim, Dahlia, why don't you guys chat? Dahlia, let us know if you have anything at Crystal Cognizance. Uh, I'm sure you're doing like distance healings and you have amazing crystals and a shop. You yeah. guys chat while I... <sighs> Check out. <laughs> All right. Um, well, Kim and I... <laughs> um, I, I am doing distance healing work. I'm actually uh, participating safely in, in, in person healing work as well. So that's masks. That's, oh my God, more cleaning than I've ever done in my life. Um, but it's possible. And um, with regard to today's topic and time, usually what we're working on is uh, getting back to the original foundation of, of what needs healing and that requires time travel um, which was shown to me in meditation after in ayahuasca healing ceremony so um, there is that piece I also participate in soul retrievals during my work which is another <laughs> time travel piece I didn't realize how much um, time travel was involved in everything and how um, simple it is, um, you know, we tend to, there are a lot of things that I think, uh, Kim, prior to us getting on, you were mentioning, like, um, and Benita too, just that we've stepped away from things, remembering things, and, and so we have this great opportunity to bring it back. Um, so that's, that's what I do at the shop, is that I participate in energy healing work that involves time travel and connecting with certain energies via mandalas and um, frequencies in the way that Kim was mentioning. Did you want to share anything, Kim? You know, I was just thinking about it. I think we all do time traveling to some extent without actually knowing it. Yeah. I was like, oh, I got 10 minutes to get to work. Let me see if I can, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, um, do you also do um, time stitching when you do the healing? You bring a, a piece of the joy back and bring it into the current? Absolutely. And it always happens through the heart space. So um, what we do is we go in, do psychic surgery on that heart space, bring forward that uh, piece of the soul and it needs updating because it's usually stuck in the time that it was in. And so um, at that point, I'm sort of removing, um, not removing because nothing can truly be removed, but shifting the energy of the pain, the, the whatever caused the shift out and then bringing that piece forward kind of giving them like a speed up because if you think about it like um it's almost like they're coming out of prison and having to quickly learn everything that everybody else knows and and um it's an opportunity at uh acclimating without re-traumatizing so Mm -hmm. interesting and yeah, that piece i never thought of because you always go and you get something and you bring it back with you and you integrate it but you never think about the part of well that came from you know 1300s and now you know in the 2100s it's like what the hell is this you know so, <laughs> right never thought about that interesting updating the technology that. yeah <laughs> and yeah. i can't claim thinking about that you know and much like you we have these early morning or late night conversations and you're like oh well i mean it makes sense who would have thought about it <laughs> Yeah, it's just like, okay, this is like, all right, I got to talk to somebody because this, you know, half makes sense, but half doesn't and because yeah. you've never heard of it before, you know, and you start Googling things and you're like, okay, somebody else has had to have thought of this, right? You're just like, okay, like I said, when I was doing the, the mandala, you know, time traveling stuff, I found two websites and one was a little bit different than what I was thinking, but one was actually activating to use it for time travel so i'm like interesting okay so there's one <laughs> that i love that in my idea so it's like okay well that's because you're supposed to create the other <laughs> <laughs> we'll see <laughs> yeah the um what i do is i i you know stretch it or shorten it um a really good example was i was coming back internationally and i was in i believe it was chicago and I still had to make the flight to Los Angeles and I wanted to get there. And so it's kind of, you're slowing time down, but you're also slipping through it faster. And the plane landed 90 minutes before it was supposed to. We had no gate and we had no tailwind. 
because we were going east to west. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah, I was still on the plane for 40 minutes because they had to find us the gate, right? I'm like, okay, I didn't set that up. So if you're going to do that, make sure you tell the universe there's going to be a gate available when we do land. Because I just said, I want to get here now. And they're like, okay, here you go. And you're like, ah, okay. <laughs> the small things. <laughs> yes, those learning curves. <laughs> yes. Hmm. Oh, wonderful. It is our heart's great joy seeing our young friends connecting with this conversation. Greetings. Greetings. Oh. I'm Lord. No greeting from you for us. <laughs> Hello. It's nice to see you again. It is our pleasure. Our young spark told us that this position brings you merriment. Yes, it does. <laughs> you understand in this vessel we find ourselves, of course, the energy flows certain ways, does it not? We bring in much energy to the body and send it out for all who are joining us in viewership. It involves sending much energy through these spindly arms to the short digits to extend the energy out. When we bring energy to ourselves again, it is refreshing for the vessel. It also gives a energetic reprieve for all of those who are viewing so that they may absorb what has already gone outward and process it before we send more. As with this moment, restful for all to process and energizing for the vessel. Oh, excellent, learn something new. As well as providing merriment for our young friends. Hmm. So Time Lord, it is our pleasure to meet with you and introduce you to our other delightful friend, our friend Starshine. Greetings to you, Starshine. Oh, I get a new name. <laughs> <laughs> Greetings. This is as we call you. For, of course, you look at a star from a distance, it's but a speck of light. Yet you see how this speck of light, there are many specks of light across your sky. And you know there are many more beyond. But as you gaze at the speck of light, what does it do? Lines go from it. And geometric shapes of lines go forward as your eyes play tricks with you. Or if you look at it through a scope, you can see lines and pulsing and energy. For each speck is a shining light of life and energy. Energy flowing with all the lovely lines ready to connect. Wow. <laughs> I'm never really sure what to do with these com compliments, but I'm, <laughs> I'm always appreciative and blown away. So thank you for the description. It's a beautiful, vibrant, energizing point of the mandala of all. Hmm. Thank you. We are so excited to be with you and imagine when your energies of time lord and stars shine the one who plays with the actual shape and grid and the one who energizes and harmonizes your energies together are a powerful powerizing force agreed Indeed. Indeed. And of course, as time is shifting on your planet, it is 
appropriate that more humans make effort to step off your only linear limited path and acknowledge that there is more to time than the single line dimension that you give to it. Mm. Yeah, multiple, um, we call them parallel universes or mm. multiple lines. Um, you know, sometimes I was reading something about doppelgangers is two of this, your timelines that are in the same moment at the same place. Mm -hmm. and you see your doppelganger or mm. your other you mm -hmm. yeah yes this can happen it happened and multiple times with me <laughs> so. my my experience with these things is that um when we are overcome with random emotions the aspects of us that are operating on another timeline are having experiences and so for every yes that we say a no is complete and these are how the timelines develop and they keep going is why we can jump from, from one moment of knowing somebody and then they sort of fade and they come back and it's like you pick up where you left off. Mm -hmm. And, and there, to, to uh, Kim's point, there are so many aspects of us operating um, the doppelgangers the, and the only time that we really come together is when a decision has to be made. And um, we can get hyper-focused about that. And I think that's maybe what the librarians may be talking about and fixating on one timeline. And also um, more recently being shown that we distribute our energy on so many timelines at once that we can fracture that energy as well and feel you know, sort of drained. And, and so the importance of, of um, you know, expansion and, and connecting with self um, may may be coming to the point of what the librarians are saying. Yes, this is an an important aspect. For it is easy to leak your energy for no purpose, or to allow a needy or greedy one to drain your resources, even if that needy or greedy one is the you within another timeline. Mm -hmm. Just imagine time as a rainbow spectrum. And keep in mind a rainbow is both moisture, light, energy, air connecting to solid place, evolving up to etheric place. There are many elements within a rainbow. There is a spectrum of color going in all directions with a shape and a flow to it. And it adjusts, it morphs depending upon the hmm, formula of the elements that create it. Yet imagine if time were like this, yet most people stay to a single line as written with a ballpoint pen. Mm. They do not look up. They do not go left or right or any way, but time behind me, time now, time ahead of me, step, 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 plodding forward, very unconscious. Yet all the rest is around you, whether you acknowledge it or not, if it exists, it is. Hmm. So while all the rest is happening with you, if you can expand your consciousness, if in this moment you say yes, but in another timeline you say no, or another timeline you say yes, but with a different emotion or a different focus or additional or limited purpose, if you can expand your energy to absorb into all of these timelines, you actually have the ability to bring all those resources to the here and now, be it bringing them into your here and now to make a bright resplendent moment for self, 
or to connect with all of the timelines and bring them into cohesion so that the collective of you through all time is a singular with subtle variations force. These are very powerful ways of being, much brighter and more expansive than the little ballpoint pen line on a sheet of paper. There's freedom in that too, you know, feeling like constricted by that ballpoint pen, feeling doomed to a particular path. And when you expand your consciousness onto those other timelines, you also have an opportunity to um, give tools, coping tools to those versions of you that, that do have to tolerate the no, or that do have to, I mean, because somebody has to do the dirty work or the heavy <laughs> lifting, whether it is your current timeline or another, if you have the capacity to have learned why not share that with all versions of yourself? And again, there's just, there's freedom in that and, and we can't bypass these things, right? So it's a, a great opportunity that's being shared through this wisdom. So thank you for that. It is our pleasure. And it is no surprise, of course, that the first time we gave a purposeful lesson to the vessel, on working with her alternative timelines to help support her actions in this one was in your presence, Starshine, in your beautiful <laughs> center. No coincidences at all. <laughs> no coincidence, for of course you have your wonderful grid energy as she was channeling the Lemurians and the Palladians and the Mother Mary and the Bride Mary and the Goddess Mother came forward to meet with her. We were holding sacred space for all. We made use of your natural mandala aspect and brought the multitude of timelines to her so that young spark of vessel could see the lessons she had learned in other timelines and apply them to present. Absolutely. It was, it was a beautiful group. I mean, I think we had at least like 20 people creating that uh, mandala as well. So there was a lot of beautiful energy flowing in that space. I miss our groups. <laughs> indeed, indeed. Yes, and of course you are hoping with your planet to go forward to a more um, beneficious future than you are with your current present. Hoping, um, but also some somewhat releasing my attachment to the outcome. You know, I, I want to learn as much as possible uh, from the good and the bad in order to uh, hand that to my other selves, to hand that to my children. So um, the evolutionary process that's necessary of learn not to stand in the way, <laughs> but to, to do my part as a good human being. <laughs> so. This is appropriate. You are allowing yourself to be emotionally neutral to the process as you are more effective when you are not so what do you say knee-jerk reactive to what is occurring? That is a drain of the energy. But I, you know, I thank you guys for that. I'm really interested in how um, Kim moves through the expansion and the contraction process of these uh, timelines and connecting with different things. Your story was very interesting about the plane. Um, so how do you, how do you go about those processes? Um, well, I have some mechanics that I use just, you know, as a, to make sure I do it the same every time. Mm. Um, but it's kind of a weird way to think about it as you're slowing time down so you can move farther, but you're also going, you're slipping through time. It's kind of a weird 
way to look at it. You're slowing it and going faster at the same time. Um, but what it does is, is because we, everything is energy and we can control our energy. And time is, time is made up by man to have an idea to keep count of something. Mm. And if we, can, if we can get away from that time is absolute, it helps. Uh, Cause it took me a while to get there. <laughs> Um, once you get that, then you say, you know what, I need to slow time down because, you know, I've been in traffic. I had to be somewhere in, in 20 minutes and they're saying it's going to take 45 and I show up with three minutes left, you know, before the meeting started. So, um, again, it was, it's a slowing down, but at the same time though, is when you're slowing things down to get somewhere because you have a small finite time, the universe makes it where things, obstacles get out of your way like cars and traffic, the green lights, you know, these kind of things, which people have already are doing currently. I got to get to work and I, I got to hit all the green lights, you know, and they just fly through faster than they've ever flown before. You know, so they're already doing it. It's just being able to get the same results every time. And so it's just getting consistency, but it's when some of the universe sometimes will not comply. It, it does have its mind of its own. <laughs> it's, um, it's hard to explain the mechanics. It really is. It just, I know, I know how to do it for me. Sure. And I explain the process on how I do it. And then other people have come up with other ways and it works for them. But it sounds like this is right in alignment with the lab with what the librarians are expressing in terms of needing to get off that singular timeline. Perhaps if we slow down enough, we can see the possibilities, we can draw back in and then go and move forward um, onto the, the desired path. I mean, even in terms of, of needing to heal, um, if we're moving too fast, if we're slipping or if we're just sort of at the mercy of time, um, we, we can miss a lot. So even in your, you're like, I can't explain it. You're doing great. Cause I don't know, I guess <laughs> I'm seeing all the possibilities and I'm like, all right, well now I'm just going to start bending time along with aligning with the frequency of what's necessary. So that's that I thank you, Kim. Uh, the one thing when you start bending time is, um, you can also start jumping timelines. Um, I was on a plane and the people next to me changed physically. They're, you know, I was like, you know, hey, wait a minute. <laughs> you know, what happened to the other people, right? Yeah. You know, it, but you're moving to a betterment for a better timeline for you because you've healed something here or you've taken care of something. Absolutely. And the more time bending, I've noticed the more time bending I do, the more time jumping, timeline jumping I'm doing. So that's, that's the key to manifestation that people don't realize is that you cannot go forward with the same stuff. You will jump timelines and you will release things and people. Um, but I do want to, because I'm kind of keeping an eye on our conversation here, Nazanin. Hi, Nazi. Happy belated birthday. Um, she asked if the librarians could please elaborate on time being absolute and what is the vehicle? Is it using a grid to slip through? So I guess that's a combination question for both the librarians and Kim. So for the librarians, please elaborate on time being absolute. And then for Kim, I guess, what is the vehicle? Mm -hmm. hmm. What a wonderful question from a very special, curious soul. Time is, of course, not absolute. It is only human mindset. And who made you believe time was absolute? Your teachers, your family, your society. Or if you ask your soul, is time absolute? Your soul would have a jolly chuckle at such a joke. Time is not absolute. Time is very loosely woven. There are several multiple techniques you can use to play with time. 
as we said, if you allow yourself to think of it as a large rainbow that you are in the middle of, and then open your mind in other timelines, what am I doing now? Use your imagination to connect, but you will find, well, you may have to think in the beginning, soon you will harmonize and you will be able to slip into alternative timelines through this rainbow concept. As they say, fake it till you make it. <laughs> Your imagination is a wonderful tool given to you to help you go from the denial to the faking and then you find, oh, someone asks you a question, go, let me slip to another timeline and see how I do that. You go, oh, how long have I been doing this? Go, I have always done this, of course. Oh, you forget that you ever had forgotten these skills for your soul knows these skills. One way of playing with time that may be useful for the humans who still think more forward linearly have trouble with the concept of time being all around us. If you read books and you skip ahead, how many more chapters? When does this happen? You may do that with your time. You are where you are. Skip ahead a little bit with, again, your magnificent imagination and allow your mind to play out elements of the future. Practice this, practice this. You will find in not too much time at all of practice, the future begins to just present itself to you, not with you creating the thought, but with the images or the impulses or the knowing, the expecting. I know this will happen. I see this happening in my mind's eye. Oh, is this happening now? I thought it already happened. I feel deja vu again. <laughs> oh, deja vu again for deja vu. <laughs> so feel welcome to skip ahead as though you are skimming through a book. Wonderful. Kim. Yes. You may even imagine it as a comic book of your life. <laughs> um. yes. To add on to that, one thing um, that I have noticed, um, I was talking with a friend and, and they were thinking this is where, you know, the house, the, the uh, remodel and this and this, and then had the whole idea where we wanted the future to go, came back to reality, I guess, and is like, well, what if this happens? What if this happens? So when you do look for your future and you start looking at it, that like, don't... Uh, don't doubt talk, you know, and because that will kill it. Yeah. As I've noticed that a lot with people as like, well, you know, how do you manifest? It's like, oh, I want this, this, and this. And then they come back to something that's negative and, and it just derails it. I definitely so. think there's an opportunity with that too. I was going to add something similar just to speak on uh, of, uh, frequency so when you're dealing with time, you're still dealing with energy, as Kim mentioned earlier, and uh, you're dealing with density. So the lower the density, the heavier the energy, the more it drags, the more you end up in um, that matching density of time. And so I see and encourage often uh, people, like if they get into that what if space, follow, follow the thought you know, let it, you know, walk it like a dog and, and see where it leads you. Cause you may in fact be materializing yourself on the timeline that your parents dreamt of you or for you. And with that, um, that outcome and how it materializes is it may not be in alignment with your soul. And that's why it feels so tough and cringy and like, you know, Ooh, I don't think I want this. Um, and something else that came inspired uh, with regard to the vehicle of time for Nazi or anybody else listening, if you're, if you are familiar with the Merkaba, um, 
if you generate that sacred geometry around your heart, expand it around your entire being and have both pyramids facing up and down spin rapidly in opposite directions, you can generate the energy field necessary to do any type of travel, time travel, frequency travel, because um, it's, it's the vehicle for your soul. So you can expand a lot within that, not to get too far into the woo-woo, but um, uh, <laughs> using your Merkaba as a vehicle to travel can be a very powerful experience. Um, and it can uh, switch your frequency to attract or, or um, remove certain things on your on your time path so um just throwing my hat in for that i think we have another comment here i want to i don't want to may we add on on that because this is an excellent technique the spinning merkaba absolutely apply this practice in the library many times it's enjoyable what we recommend also is put the spinning merkaba one side the other side spinning opposite ways inside your body choose whichever chakra is activated for the purpose and let it spin you will find yourself instantly transformed into a grid person making it very easy to connect with that which you are wishing for oh beautiful yeah i tend to only work through the heart space but i'll have to play i love playing <laughs> <laughs> let's see where we end up tonight <laughs> right i don't know if i'll be back tomorrow bye guys um now uh gina palmer hi gina says uh or she has a question for the librarians if that's okay um she says dear librarians uh she was once told that, I'm just gonna read it in her words, that might be easier. I was once told that I was rare because I have written in and can write in my own records. I feel that the same, I feel that the same as being in different timelines as you are speaking of my mom taught me how to slow and speed up time. Any suggestions for helping me share this gift? So I think she's talking about, and Gina in the comments, if you would update me if I'm saying this wrong, but I think she's talking about rewriting her, her in her Akashic Record book. Yes, and, absolutely. And how to improve and share that gift. Absolutely, absolutely. Our young friend, it is our pleasure to speak with you. And of course, you are not rare in that you can write in your book for anyone can, but you are very rare in that you are aware of this ability. And you practice it, you maintain your skill set. This is a wonderful rarity and, of course, a part of your purpose for this life. As you know, you know when you look in your heart, you know this is so, that you designed yourself to actively utilize this skill set. Then you look around you, you wonder why are not all others doing this? Hmm you know the answer and you know why you are the one awakened with such a skill and with such beautiful communication skills, such a lovely presence and a, a warm receptive energy to you. All of this transpires together to be in some shape or another to share your knowledge and skills in whatever way is comfortable for you in the moment. Your soul is most particular. There must be no pressure put upon you with expectations, not from us, 
or from any external source. You must be your own guide. Your heart, your inspiration is your guide. If others tell you, you must utilize your skill in such a way, but it does not resonate with your joy center, then the others must go elsewhere for you have an excellent inner guidance system. And for your time skills, we suggest you have a conversation with our time Lord. We believe the two of you would be very merry with your conversation. Absolutely. Excellent, got a travel buddy. <laughs> <laughs> And to the librarian's point of other people, um, you know, as we go on these quests for time, uh, realize that you are going to see some things happen. I know um, the librarians gave Benita and I some insight and um, my own intuitive inklings earlier, or rather later last year around August, we had seen some things on the timelines of destruction and, mm -hmm. um, and even an explosion. And so as you venture onto time travel, expanding it, contracting it, looking at it, whatever the case may be, if it involves other people, you know, there is, there is a cautionary tale. There may be things that need to play out as Kim was saying, the universe has a mind of its own and, and we can't possibly begin to understand what else is transpiring in that moment of transformation. So getting into the time game because you want to prevent somebody from something um, or prevent pain is, it's, again, it's a cautionary tale and experience because it may not play out that way. Um, but you can, you can move on to the path of, I usually ask for it, that they go through the experience of uh, least resistance, as little stress as possible, that they get the right people and the right coping mechanisms to assist them through the process um, rather than trying to hinder it or alter it because I can't process their pain. It is important to look at the timeline or the experience within the time and determine which frequency is this? Is this something that happens, occurs by happenstance? Then it is easy to push it to a more joyous timeline for it is merely happenstance, no meaning whatsoever, except that which you take from it by choice. Is it a, mm, mm, a, a life lesson, a karmic lesson? in which case it must play out for the individual on this timeline has contracted by their soul to experience a lesson that will increase their knowledge and skills within their eternal life. It must play out. You may hope for them and help with them to go fully through the process as easily as possible, many times these are not easy tasks. So as easily as possible may still be very difficult or painful, but you must complete it. You must complete it or you are stuck within time. And as you go forward on your linear time, you are bringing this time with you always. It weighs upon your timeline. So you may help someone not by abolishing an experience, but by completing the experience and growing from it, releasing what needs to be released. So you may evolve to your next self on the same timeline. There is also the timeline of the patterns of the planet, which may or may not be altered, but they are complicated. It is like changing all the traffic signals within a vast city. Mm. One little impact, one little change may or may not, if it has a trigger effect, it may be dramatic. If it has 
just one traffic light is always green when you need it, but the next one is red, the one before is red, then really it has little significance until you impact the ambiance of the whole. Their timelines are as complicated as any other structure. They're fascinating, fascinating to explore. Hmm. Absolutely. Speaking of, of conce uh, consequences, as you were, um, kind of like the butterfly effect, you squish a butterfly in Australia and you get a hurricane in the United States. <laughs> yeah. uh, I wanted to ask Kim if she has had any experiences with consequence with your time bending. Um, not, you mentioned, you know, spending extra time on the plane because you didn't ask for everything involved, but I I'm sort of mean alternately around, um, you know, having to make other kinds of adjustments or, or seeing ramifications. Um, yeah, so a couple of them, when I've slowed time down, I have have forgotten to reset. Mm. And then, you you know, we've all had that where it's like, God, what time is it? It's only nine o'clock in the morning. It feels like it's <laughs> two in the afternoon, right? Yeah. And you're stuck because, you, and you're trying to reset time to put it in a more natural flow. And it's just, It'll reset when it's damn good and ready to. <laughs> um, one of the biggest ones that just happened, um, I wasn't able to do anything with time as far as forward or backwards. It was more of moving lines to see things. Um, I was in a perpetual slow. One hour was like three. I got a lot of shit done, trust me. But it, it was over a two month period. But oh. it allowed me to take the moment to heal some of the stuff, work through things, read, research, find new. I mean, it, it expanded to a point of I couldn't have learned all what I did in those two months if it had been regular time. Wow. But I didn't realize it until after. So it's not really a consequence. It's time's going to do, lack of word, time will do what it wants to. The universe is like, I need you to do this, and they will slow it down which is what they did this last year for the world. Yeah. It's, it was a huge reset. And if they didn't take the opportunity to do it, you know, they might get stuck. They might get stuck in a slow and then yeah. it's just, mm -hmm. it's painful. <laughs> yeah. 2020 was like 20 years long. I, this is, I, I had a, I had a three-year-old for all of 2020 and I felt like he's six now. <laughs> so, so uh, you're, your young children benefited greatly from all the special time with their beautiful mommy. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And I benefited as well as a workaholic. <laughs> I got to put some of that down and really spend time with my family in ways I would not have. So I'm grateful. But I, you know, looking at him, I'm just like, aren't you driving yet? <laughs> and that, that's an effect. Yeah. We would like to mention one aspect of time that is important for, you mentioned this 2020 as a reset, possibly a reset, possibly the beginning of some terrible near future calamities as you Starshine and the conduit have seen, we are not out of that timeline. We are still within it. There is still the grave potential of many horrors benefiting humanity within the near future. If you think the COVID virus was terrible, hmm, there may be far more terrible coming to you. Now we do not say this to distress our viewing audience, although if you were distressed, that is, of course, natural. We say this because time has the energy of your attention and focus. As our Time Lord said, what you focus upon is what comes forward. Those who say, I plan for everything that can go wrong, and I'm glad I do because everything goes wrong. 
versus those who say, I plan for all the wonderful potential and truly all is wonderful. And I go beyond my expected potential for it is the focus. Humanity is in a great global karmic lesson. Your planet, your beautiful planet Earth is in a great karmic lesson. These two lessons at the moment are in friction with each other. Until humanity learns to honor the planet's karmic lesson, humanity will always be the one to lose. When you go up against all the mandalas and the frequency of everything of nature, and natural forces within your planet. It is imperative that humanity return to the natural ways of Earth. It is imperative that humanity come together to help each other. No more fighting, no more toxic interaction. Come together to cure the virus, then share this cure with every single human being. Mm -hmm. Then say, now that we are together, what else can we tackle? How can we share our resources so there is no poverty, no abuse, but all of humanity rising together as one loving race in harmony with our planet. The sooner you get to this point, the sooner the planet's resources will stop attacking you. Mm. We invite humans to look at your timeline forward because certainly when you see the distant time, you see a beautiful planet that has reached its fruition of this karmic cycle and evolved to a wonderful, what you would call paradise state. Look to this as your guiding light and bring the frequency of this to your timeline. Become the one who says, I plan for everything glorious and glory surrounds me. Mm. Share this energy with others. You will find this is where your butterfly effect may be very impactful for you encourage others to be in harmony and loving and kind this may spread it may share for there are many who would prefer this hmm. it sounds like the the tie together with this um uh advanced warning from the librarians is that we have an opportunity with the inspiration of the Merkaba in different chakras and different areas of the body. We have an opportunity because we know that higher frequency means faster. So if you're spinning that Merkaba faster, not only are you working with time, energy, and frequency, you're also working with healing. And so if the, um, the energetics of the virus operate at one area, um, one frequency, then you can shift into others to potentially bring forward inspirations around cures and solutions and ways in which you can help humanity. But I think that Kim is offering us a great opportunity here to slow time down and work with that Merkaba spin to elicit the healing that she experienced earlier in the year, um, to be able to intentionally slow down and 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 still be at this this quickening this this fast spinning merkaba or or whatever vehicle you choose doesn't have to be the merkaba but generating within the energy field some sort of rapid energy to get us to healing and inspiration but time is slow. And then when time picks back up, it's like, oh, I've got the tool. I've got the, you know, I know my, my piece, how I will impact um, and my part in this, in this healing and coming together of the planet. So, mm. and no role will be too small. 
is the important part. One of the things that I love to share with people is as we do our own healing, um, that healing goes forward and backwards and, and it is sent up into the collective consciousness that we all share. And while you're doing your healing around trauma, pain, ancestral wounds, that gets shot up to everybody who's connected to that frequency within the cosmos. And then those people start theirs. And so please understand that while you may feel this pull to, I've got to help the world, it will start from within. And we can slow down time. We can work through our hearts or Merkabas or any of the chakras. And we can bear in mind that as the librarians have cautioned, we're not done. We still have choices to make on this path, so. So to, to add on what you were talking about, about, you know, starting within is um, when you heal yourself and you become stronger, when you walk by somebody else, your energy will, you know, I don't want to say infect in a bad way, but it will infect them and they'll feel lighter and they'll feel better and they'll start to heal and then they'll start and it will just be a chain reaction, you know, as they go, you know, kind of like when you smile at somebody on the you're like, oh, have a great day. And they smile back at you. And then they smile at somebody else. And then it just kind of, you know, morphs the same way um, with the person. Unless you're in New York. Unless you're <laughs> and in you New York. get dirty looks. <laughs> 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 or, oh, like, why are you happy? Um, they we... may look at you dirty, but their angel is grateful. And the <laughs> energy may still pull in through a tiny piercing. This is sage advice you share. Absolutely fair. Mm -hmm. Absolutely fair. From two wonderful humans who listen to your core self. Hmm. Very <laughs> wise. We do have, and I don't know if the librarians are willing to take one more question or should we? Of course. Is the vessel okay? We may speak one more question. The vessel is beginning to weary, but we are curious okay. for the one more. So this one's coming from Cecily. And uh, Cecily says, if you plan to stay and have what you need, isn't that faith that all is well, no matter where you think the changes might be? So perhaps um, uh, when she says planning on staying, she's talking about if you plan to stay on this timeline. Cecily, you'll have to correct me quickly if, uh, if that's not what you meant. We will address this question for certainly there is staying in this timeline or staying in this life. Perhaps your soul and your angel have come to you and said, if you wish, you may finish your life now. And you say, no, I think I'll stay. This is possible. Hmm. Or is it returning to this planet for your next life? For certainly many of you who are here for your part of healing this planet, many of you are on the cusp of ascending or could have ascended or soon will ascend, or you may be from another group altogether who came to this planet for some period of lives. So you may be acclimated at this point to help with the healing. There are many of you who are weary of this task and ready to move out of the unconscious incarnation cycle back to something lighter, more joyous. You are ready for a vacation from the human system. Okay, so to elaborate on the question, Cecily was specifically saying if she moves to another place uh, to get away from natural disasters, is mm -hmm. that a form, isn't moving to another place a form of plan to get away from natural disasters? Um, so it is important for you to care for self. 
Okay. If there are natural disasters that will demolish your home or bring anxiety into your persona, you wish to move elsewhere for the purpose of being safe and knowing you may relax and ground with the planets, this is appropriate. The natural disasters may range from, of course, a hurricane or an earthquake or such, or it may be there is violence, or it may be it is just stressful and expensive for whatever reason. If you move and it makes you feel comforted, if you move and you are safe, you are financially for, of course, you humans cling to this finance system, which is ridiculous, <laughs> yet you must account for it with your daily existence. You would be so much better off if you released it, but that will come, that will come. So yes, look for your well-being. Also look within yourself. Is your desire to move because you are having a panic? Or is it because this is actually the best move? Look within yourself. Make sure you feel balanced and aligned before making any decisions. Then the decision that you make will be the one that is beneficial for yourself. Absolutely. That makes total sense. But we wish to continue with the answer we were given be giving before, for there are many humans who say, I do not wish to return for another life. This is terrible. <laughs> Stick around another decade or two, you will change your mind, for there is some very good stuff coming along. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I'm not getting any more comments, so I think we can probably give, give the vessel a break. <laughs> it's been over an hour. <laughs> oh my, talk about time bending. The time flies. <laughs> we will depart the vessel. She is weary and literally knocking upon the energetic skeletal system. We thank you for sharing this space with us. We have enjoyed the conversation immensely. Thank you so much for your wisdom. Thank you. Blessings. Blessings. <laughs> and uh, while Benita is coming back, I think um, with regard to the question of, of moving and what's right, you know, that does, it does create a shift, right? Every decision that we make impacts our timeline. And so we, you know, if you, if you weren't going to move, then, then you stay on that timeline. If you do move, then you get onto another timeline and that in and of itself affects everybody. It's a, there's no way to not affect folks. But again, I hearken back to Kim's uh, modality. If you slow down, you could probably, if you slow the time stream, um, you could probably see what will result and you can check in with your soul too to say like hey are we doing the right thing um and that'll probably come through feelings and things like that i think it's important to understand that this time process comes through all of your senses it's not as if you'll stop and have that you know uh what's that old show raven um moment moment where you're seeing how things will play out it's it's mm -hmm. through all of the senses right welcome back bonita <laughs> Back. Yeah. Thank you. That was that was cool. <laughs> Woo. <laughs> yeah. And you know, um, because I was kind of getting closer and closer towards the ends. And I was literally, I was like literally knocking, going, um, guys, guys, can I get in my body again? <laughs> <laughs> it's not time yet <laughs> we haven't used up all the hot water in the shower <laughs> but I did want to say about the moving you know um when it's time for me to move I always know it 
like when it was time for me to close my wellness center, sell my business, sell my home, leave Falls Church, like everything just went so smoothly. It was such a guided, effortless process and it worked out really well. And then last September, and they were like, buy a house now. Two weeks later, the perfect house just kind of fell into place. So I, I judge if it's time to go somewhere based on, am I hitting a million stumbling blocks? Then I need to stop and reset and go, wait, am I going this way? But actually I should be going maybe even just like a sidestep over or, you know, so I, I look at like how things are flowing. If staying where I'm at is bringing harm to me and those I'm responsible for, then I, it's, you know, yeah. then it's time to go. And so I just look at um, what path flows with grace. Well, there, and, and those impulses and inklings are also affected by other things, right? So the moving company that's struggling, but, you know, your contribution will, you know, at least get them to next month. Mm-hmm. So you may get this inkling to move and then it's like, oh, well, it has, there's, again, there's that ripple effect. So it's a, it's an inkling for everybody involved in that transaction, or maybe you need to move because your energy is, um, I don't know, placating somebody in your life and they need space from you to, to grow and evolve. Um, mm-hmm. That's also a possibility, right? So the, oh yeah. <laughs> time <laughs> it's like we want to simplify it i mean i think we should just sort of throw the whole thing in the trash and just live by daylight that's you know, <laughs> that's my plan yeah. i love how the librarians were like money boo you know it's, <laughs> it's like all right go ahead and materialize on this plane of existence let's see how you do <laughs> Yeah, they are so over us, like holding on to the structured reality we created for ourselves, as sure. opposed to living in the actual reality yeah. that that we forget about by the time we're like three or six. Um, yeah. Although I, you know, money truly, it's not everything. I would happily accept food, <laughs> massage from the right from the right person. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm happy to barter, but we are <laughs> <laughs> not there yet. Thank you so much, Kim. You're so, you're so insightful. I love, yeah. I love your ideas. I love what you're doing with things. We will be talking because I, I want to pick your brain because a few things of this morning, you'd say, like, oh yeah, I forgot about that. So we will be talking. Excellent. I'm good oh, yeah. for it. And you know, I'm now like the librarians told me, I will understand why they wanted the two of you here with them. And while I was out, you know, they take me back as part of the collective of the Akasha Collective. So I was watching everything from their perspective and I was seeing Kim's way of energy and flow and Dahlia, your way of energy and flow and how the two of you came together. It was like everything just like, like, like Dahlia, I could see your energy to like, you really powered up Kim's energy and Kim, you really flowed Dahlia's energy. Like the two of you powered each other up. Absolutely. You're both powerful on your own, but together. And then the librarians were using it to send their energy through to everyone watching. Well, so they, they were like piggybacking on you guys. <laughs> I could definitely, my legs started shaking at some point. I'm sure my computer's all over the place during the broadcast. <laughs> so yeah, there was Your a lot. Your palms start sweating. You're like, come yeah. on. <laughs> yeah, I, I learned to buy Lume deodorant a long time ago. <laughs> sweat's going to happen when you're dealing with the librarians. But as usual, Benita's doing her connectivity thing. So <laughs> she always connects people. Then, and you're just like, man, I, <laughs> how is this so, so uh, synchronistic? doesn't come out of my head they told me months ago that we were gonna like we they told me months and months ago when I first contacted you guys hey you want to do this so you know the timing yeah, I just is learned to say yes whenever Benita's like yeah let's do this thing I'm like all right <laughs> I'm sure it'll work out exactly <laughs> yeah 
Um, so uh, just to remind you, everyone watching, uh, Dahlia, can you put in the link in comments to your website and sure. if you want also your meetup group uh, in another comment? So Dahlia has a wonderful wellness center and she has, um, you know, she's an amazing healer. I just got to say this real quick. One time Dahlia and I did a swap. I did a past life reading for her, which was like more fun for me, I think. And, um, and then Dahlia uh, the next week gave me um, an energy healing. And what was so crazy is I went to her beautiful wellness center and I walked in and there was a little statue of an elephant. And I saw this little statue of an elephant with all her crystals. And I was like, oh, I feel like that elephant is mine. <laughs> I didn't say anything because like, I may think like a greedy, rude person. I'm not going to speak like a greedy, rude person. And then Dahlia came in and um, she said, oh yeah, by the way, this elephant told me this morning to bring her in because she's for you. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> so we did the healing. And um, when, and I'm lying there and I was like, oh my word, Jesus is healing me through Dahlia, which is always a weird thing for me because, you know, I was raised Unitarian Jew. So Jesus was not part of like my upbringing, um, but I can feel Jesus was there. Like Dahlia was healing me, amazing, powerful. And Jesus was like flowing in through her healing me. And I was like, that's weird and then I didn't say anything because I felt weird when we we're all done we we're talking Dahlia said by the way Jesus came through me and was healing you I'm like I know oh my word so we're all done and I like grounded myself to get ready to drive home so I'm like okay I'm grounded I'm good I got in my car took out my car keys they're in my hand and the car key ring broke into multiple pieces in my hand and all the keys fell to the floor of my car. So I had to get out of my car to pick up all the like five keys that had fallen to the floor of my car. I'm like, okay. I did my typical grounding, not my Dahlia plus Jesus just healed me grounding. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, okay, I wanna get home safely. <laughs> so um, Dahlia is totally awesome. And Kim has been, you know, Kim's awesome too. You guys know Kim and I are doing a live stream on the 13th, right here on my Facebook page, talking about time bending and sharing funny anecdotes uh, to answering questions from you all. And then if you want to learn how to bend time yourself on February 20th, Kim is teaching a class in the comments. We have connections to both of those. And then also, if you would like to join us uh, the first Sunday of every month, I channel right here on Facebook, I channel the librarians and they chat with someone awesome, whatever person of their choosing, I have no control. I'm just their secretary <laughs> and conduit. But also, if you want to talk to them directly, every Wednesday night, at bonitawoods.org. Uh, you can sign up for a one-time ticket or join our monthly group. I channel the librarians every Wednesday night and they give a different lesson and they actually chat with you. They answer your questions. You know, they, they love, they love teaching and they love chatting. And they like Mr. Burns. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and it looks here like uh, Nazi signed up for Kim's class on the 20th. Yes, so, awesome. Yeah. Oh, Nazi's going to be so good at that. She's she always has good questions. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you all so much for joining us. Uh, Kim Dahlia, stay online and everyone on Facebook. Thank you for joining us. And thank I you. hope we. Thank you guys. You. We'll see you soon. Yeah, see you again.